Hi, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of Game and Interactive Media Design. We have just finished a very simple, primitive table. Um, and it has Turbo Smooth on many of its components so that it can actually look like it's made out of wood and metal tubes. And what we have are, um, we just need to put some materials on it. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to start in 3D Studio Max. We might as well. We could put all the materials on in Unreal Engine, but let's go ahead and start in 3D Studio Max. So t if you tap the M key, you'll pull up the material editor. It is also on the toolbar here. It looks like, I don't know what this looks like. It looks like a square with checkerboards leading to two spheres with checkerboards. That's the material editor. Um, this is, it should pull up the Slate Material Editor, which is in its newest form. Of course, when I was learning 3D Studio Max, there was not a Slate Material Editor. If you click on Modes, you can go to Compact Material Editor, and it will change its form. This is what I grew up with. Now, I'm only showing you this in case you find tutorials on your own, and you're like, how do I get to that Material Editor? It's the Modes. We're going to use Slate, though. Slate allows us to build a material um, intuitively in this little viewport here. So on the left, there's all of the things we can start with. And we are going to, let's just see where it says materials, general, scan line, standard material. We are going to use a standard material. It just so happens that standard materials work well converting, um, being converted into Unreal Engine the game engine. So we are going to start with standards. Now this scan line, what that refers to is the renderer, um, but we're going to just use standard and it'll be fine. Just like if you use a ray trace engine in 3D Studio Max, these ray trace materials will be much more helpful. Uh, okay, left click and drag this into our little viewport here. And what we want to do first is double click where it says material number 25 standard. Double click it. And that opens up all the details here on the right. So I'm going to highlight material 25 and I'm just going to rename that. This is going to be wood enter. And all I'm going to do is change the color, the diffuse color. So if you left click that gray square to the right of diffuse, that allows us to change basically the color of the object. We're just going to choose a light brown there. So my RGB is 115, 115, let's go with just 90, uh, 115, 115, 90, and hit OK. And what we can do is, let's just show you what we do here. I'm going to look at both at the same time. I want to see my object in my viewport and I want to see my material in my viewport of my material editor. And just to point out the way you move around in the material editor is you can scroll wheel in and out to zoom in and out and you can middle mouse button pan around. And I'm going to left click and drag from this little circle dealy into my scene and let go of my mouse and that'll add that material to the plank. Now the other thing I'd probably do is use my control clicking to select every single one of my planks. Oops, can I do that? Yeah, drag it and you're gonna let go on one of them and it's gonna say assigned to selection or assigned to object. I wanna assign it to the whole selection. In fact, that's why I created that selection. So I'm gonna say assigned to selection there. Now the cool thing is if we change the diffuse or the wood material diffuse, like let's say we want a pink table, we can just set that diffuse color to pink. But I don't want to do that, obviously. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is create another standard material, drag it into my viewport here, double click material numbers 26, highlight that, and call this metal legs and click on diffuse and that's actually a really dark thing so let's just set it to something charcoaly say okay and again i'm going to select here oh that's already a group so i'm going to drag it onto here let go apply it to selection and now we have that all right and that is our table 
with some materials selected. Just so you know, uh, let me go back to the material editor in Max. Um, if I select this in my viewport and delete it, select this material in that view one and delete it, just so you know, it doesn't delete materials from your scene. You still have an actual, like under here on your left, under your material map browser, we still have scene materials and those materials are still there. If I double click them, it'll open it all the way back up. Okay. There is a slight problem. We do have to do a few things before we can export this to our, to our game engine. Um, and actually I have been a terrible person this entire series of videos and I have not saved my work. If my work, if my computer shut down, I might be uh, in a bad shape, but I'm going to go ahead and save this right now. Save as. And what I'm supposed to do is I'm going to save it in a very good spot. Like, let's see, this PC, um, not on my C drive that's about to conk out. My D drive, D drive, Hegni. Oh, I'm going to do SP202020. Uh, 2020 and there's table to max and I'm gonna go ahead and call this you see I've done this table a few times um, to get comfortable with it uh, you may have to model something a few times too I'm gonna call this st for Stedman table a one now what if I didn't save it like would I have been able to find it so I'm going to actually exit uh, I'm going to say reset do you want to reset yes um, let me just see I want to show you something if you go to open under your documents oh, I hope this is I hope this is true documents you have a 3d studio max folder and you have a folder called auto back in there and there should be yes right now it is 10 29 a.m. for me on 1 7 2020 here look at 1-7-2020. It has been automatically saving content and the latest thing that it saved was from 10-27 a.m. auto back. So I could actually find my my piece. Now if you're if you're using a university computer yours might actually if your computer gets shut down you will lose this auto back. Um, but I don't want to open this now because I actually made a good save. So I'm going to open no, I don't want to save this. I'm going to go back to this PC, find where I saved it. Uh, SP 2020, Table 2, 3D Studio Max, ST. Whoops, not that one. Dang it. ST01. Now, if you find yourself working for like another, you know, five minutes, go ahead and do File, Save As and add this little plus button. And what this plus button does in the Max's save as dialog box, it adds a number to it. And that's why I've gotten in the habit of saving files with the underscore and a number. And if I do file save as again, I can click that button and notice it says ST underscore 01, 02. This one will change it to 03. So when I was working for my firm, what I do is I do that all the way up to 99. And then I'd usually, um, file everything and kind of start over with zero zero once again. Let's show you what happens when we go through this um, export process because we're kind of done adding materials. You know what? I'm just going to call it a day and we'll stop here and in the next video we'll look at um, exporting this into a game engine. Okay.